Hey, what's going on? It's Zobua here, and today I'm bringing you guys a slime farm. That's right, unlimited slime. You can get your sticky pistons out of it. You can get your slime blocks, all kinds of stuff. Make some flying machines. There you go. So the first thing you need to do is find a slime chunk. You figure this out by digging a hole or going into a cave and finding where slimes spawn underground. Then, once you figure that out, you need to press F3 and G to light up these grids. This will show the edge of where the uh, chunk is. Then you need to go down to Y40 and just start digging it down all the way to bedrock. Plus you need to dig three spots on two of the sides directly opposite of each other. Dig those down as well because that will be part of our collection area. I'm going to go ahead and throw all the stuff up on the screen for you. Uh, pause it if you need to. If not, I'm going to keep on digging, get, up, get myself all the way down to bedrock. But uh, let's get started. Alright, once you have it all chopped down, you're actually going to leave the center grid about two blocks higher than the side three. Reason being, we need our collection system on the side and it takes a couple of extra blocks. And if you dig down all the way and then try to dig down more, you'll end up hitting bedrock. So uh, just figure out what the lowest you can make the sides are and then add two blocks to the center. Next up we have our collection system. So at the end of one of these three sections next to the slime chunk, you're actually going to dig out a couple spots, put down a comparator, one block down and one block over, with a block on, uh, next to it, and a repeater on top of it, with a redstone torch in the back. It's a basic auto collection system, you guys can google it if, uh, if uh, you haven't seen it before, or I've got it in several of my videos and I break it down a little better. Um, such as my bamboo farm, my, uh, I don't know, many different farms. I think I even have it in my, uh, what, super smelter perhaps? Anyway, you finish up by putting these two blocks on here and it makes a complete circuit which powers the repeater and unpowers everything else. Now next to this comparator, if we put a hopper at any point, when there's something in the hopper, it will actually depower everything and it will turn off anything that's above it. So what we do is we put down a hopper and then we put down a powered rail above that hopper. And when there's something going through the hopper, the powered rail will turn off so the cart will stay there until it's fully unloaded and then it will turn back on and shoot off. That being said, the next step is to add our collection chest and the hopper. Alright, the next step is going to be to finish up our collection system. So on the side, put down some normal rails. I usually do about eight normal rails and then one powered rail. Uh, make sure that you have some way of powering this. I usually just put a redstone block under it um, because you can't put anything directly above it. We're going to have magma blocks there. Just kind of zig all the way up and down this whole three block section. Oh, I just got a hopper thrown at me. Perfect. So I'm going to finish this up really quick and then I'll show you guys where that hopper goes that will finish our system. So the hopper is going to go right here, stabbed into the back, and we're going to replace where that hopper is going with a chest. See how the powered rail is immediately lit up? That's because our uh, unloading system is actually connected to it. Anytime that something's flowing through that hopper, it will depower and the rail won't be able to shoot off, or the minecart won't be able to shoot off on its own. So one thing, at the very end, make sure you put down one more powered rail. Again, I come back and I power these. Um, you can't just put down a redstone torch, you have to put a redstone block underneath. Once you have that set up, a minecart will go back and forth, collecting anything above it, um, and then it will... Uh, unload everything at our fully unloading system. Alright, so the next thing you're going to want to do is put down all of these magma blocks. You're going to fill in both sides of the three extra section that's not actually in the spawning uh, slime block. Uh, reason being, uh, it will kind of be our killing platform. It, it's what will kill the slimes. Now before you completely seal it in like this, you do want to make sure that you put a minecart with hopper at the bottom and give it a push. As long as all of your powered rails are synced up and the one above the chest is a solid block, it should bounce back and forth, back and forth, um, and constantly collect and then drop off things. 
One thing to point out when you're on these magma blocks, if you don't have frost boots, you can always crouch down and not take damage. But if you're standing up, you're going to be taking damage. So make sure you get ready to crouch or, as they call it, sneak in the game. Alright, and that finishes up your collection area. As you can see, I am actually at Y8. I need to build all the way up to Y40. So what we're going to do is every two and a half blocks, you put down a slab on the upper half. Reason being... We want to get as many layers as we can, but we also uh, know that the large slimes take two and a half blocks to spawn. Not three, two and a half. And if we put three, we'll end up with a bunch of endermen down here. So once, you, uh, once you're, you've realized where two and a half up is, you just go ahead and build it up. And then you put down some glowstone or some jack-o'-lanterns in the ground to make sure that none of the spots are light level seven or below. If any of the light is 7 or below, you will get mobs spawning. However, you don't want to put down torches because the torch spam will actually minimize where the slimes can spawn. They can't spawn in a torch. So, you want to minimize it by spacing out the jack-o'-lanterns or the glowstone as best as possible. However, you also don't want to uh, put too much, you know, because that would reduce the spawn. Um, let me skip ahead and I'll show you guys exactly how I do it. Alright, I'm up on the second or third floor right now. What I do is I count three spots from the corner and then three spots in, and I break that one. I'll replace it with a glowstone, and then I will actually do that on each of the corners. So three spots and then three spots in. Break it and change out the glowstone. As you can see, my friend, uh, my fellow chill crafter is actually helping me out by uh, doing those other corners. Then at this point, we just need to do a couple right in the middle. So we'll do uh, diagonally in the middle. So kind of figure out where the middle two spots are. And dig them out like that. And then throw down a couple of glowstones. At this point, there's only going to be a couple of dark sections. But uh, they are going to be towards the two sides. As you can see, I dropped down to 8. I dropped down to 8. Not quite 7. But there are two blocks that will still have 7. If you come all the way over to the corner or to the side, it will actually get a seven. Right there. So the uh, simple fix to this is just throw a torch on the wall. That won't affect spawning, but it will light up this one block. There you have it. So as long as you do that on each floor, it will minimize how many spots you take away from spawning, and it will help out each. Uh, each uh, section so that nothing else can spawn. Now as you're building up you're going to want to build these sections for your iron golems. Each of these blocks will actually rotate left and then right, left and then right. So you'll put one above this uh, in between floors one and two you'll put one above the left magma blocks and then in between floors two and three you put it above the right magma blocks. Then 3 and 4, you put it above the left. Then 4 and 5, you put it above the right. So you go back and forth, back and forth. And it's just a simple little cage for them with some fences in the front. What this will do is uh, it will actually grab any slimes from those two floors on that half of the spawn block. And it will pull them towards the iron golem where they'll fall to their death. Don't worry, these iron golems won't despawn. If you're worried about stuff spawning in there with them, um, first off, they'll mess anything up. But if, uh, you know, if you're worried long term, maybe the, the things get a good one hit, all that, you can always just light up in there if you'd like. It won't impact the spawning at all. Make sure that you fill in any small little sections like this because you don't want the spawns to uh, get stuck there and you don't want other mobs to spawn if you, can, uh, if you can help it. Once you have the cages for your iron golems uh, in between each floor, then uh, all you have to do is build up these floors until you get to Y40. Make sure they're well lit. Make sure all your cracks are sealed and everything. And your farm will be good to go. Let's take a look at it. Well, we made it up to the top floor. And as you can see there a second ago, we ran out of glowstone. So we used one jack-o'-lantern. They work the same. But uh, let's take a hop down and look at this. I mean, it's got to be 12, 15 floors, something like that. It's incredible, uh, each of these platforms has a chance for a slime to spawn. So all that you need to do now is seal it up so that the slimes can't escape, 
and they should start spawning any second and hopping down. It does oftentimes take a minute or two, and one thing that's very important is that the more that you light up caves in the area so that other mobs can't spawn, the more slimes you're going to get to spawn, the more efficient this will be. About 30 seconds later, I noticed this guy coming down. He was actually our first guy, and look how quickly he just died. Fall damage plus the magma. It's incredible. Um, at this point, I realized that sometimes slime balls will gather up by the very bottom uh, iron golem. If you want to fix this, you can actually raise up the bottom one by one block, and then they won't actually die and plop onto that spot. Otherwise, most of them won't end up right there, so I mean, it doesn't really matter too much. But uh, that's just personal preference in the end. So let's go take a look. A, uh, one slime has come down, and we already got six out of him. Nine out of him. That's incredible, actually. That's more than most slimes will give you. Actually, yeah, that's, uh, that's a very good number. But uh, once, uh, once we clear out the caves around here, I expect to see several slimes. There's another one that just died. I expect to see several. And this should be collected any second from the minecart. You'll see it just kind of disappear. If I could look at it. <laughs> there it goes, it's gone. Um, so it has been delivered with the minecart with Hopper back to the chest, back to the unloading system, and it's working. If you guys have any questions, leave me a comment. If not, I really hope you guys enjoyed. Uh, and this is Sobua. Till next time, I'm out.